I'm joined now from Edinburgh by the Scotland correspondent of The Guardian, Severin Carroll. Severin, mm -hmm. what, uh, there's a huge uh, handbags at Don's spat going on at the moment, isn't there? Do, just take us through it. Well, I, th I think part of the problem we have here is there are two competing agendas. There's the agenda of the Better Together campaign, who are clearly wanting to portray themselves as being a, an, org an organisation that's attracting more individual donations and donations from a wider range of sources. Now, that's true, but there's also the alternative case, of course, that the people that they're getting to donate to them do have business hinterlands, they've got back backgrounds and histories. And, of course, the Taylor case is one where the independence movement is quite keen to show that there are questions and issues that Better Together simply aren't adequately addressing. Now, it allows both sides to be able to point the finger at each other, of course. I mean, Better Together counter case is that, yes, Scotland are incredibly reliant on people that are close supporters and allies of the Scottish National Party, very far from the broad grassroots, community-based campaign that they claim to be. Right. So it's a bit of a, you know, the, yeah, it's a handbags adorned to an extent. It, it, it was got a little bit beyond handbags tonight, hasn't it? Because the, the, um, because the lawyers are now involved, aren't they? Yes. And, I mean, the, the involvement of the lawyers actually goes back several days. It goes back to an article originally posted on the pro-independence website, uh, the National Collective, which was the beginning of the interest from mainstream news organisations into Mr Taylor's background. Uh, it, there are also uh, other organisations in the independence movement, websites, bloggers, who have picked up similar allegations. And the problem that we have here, of course, is that, frankly, there's a clash here between the way in which professional journalists and news organisations would operate and the way in which campaigners are operating. And the campaigners perhaps haven't quite had the... Uh, experience, knowledge, legal advice that may have prevented some of the problems they're now encountering. Right, but, but legal letters have gone out on behalf Indeed of Mr have. Taylor. And, uh, we know the National Collective website has been taken offline. There have been threats to other, um, and legal letters, quite forceful legal letters, have been sent to other uh, nationalist websites as well. So it's getting quite intense, I think, for the independence movement in that sense. And of course, they're turning that around as a cause of ire and fury to throw against better together. They yeah. see, feel that their right to comment, their right to attack is being suppressed. Now, I, I mean, look, on the legalism of this, of course, if Mr Taylor believes he's been defamed, he is legally perfectly entitled to take action. But politically, um, for the Better Together campaign, if it becomes, a, you know, if it looks like they get involved in some affair where basically they're taking um, elements of the other side court, that, that, that politically, I mean, whatever the rights and wrongs of the legal affair, politically that might not be terribly good for them, should no, it? No, it won't play well at all. I mean, it, it's certainly going to fuel the uh, sense of outrage of their opponents, and it's going to start putting them on the back foot. Uh, I think the difficulty really for both sides is going to be seeing how far this goes, whether this really becomes something that's protracted or whether it can be uh, dealt with cleanly one way or the other and I suspect for the Better Together campaign there's rather a bit more to come out on this one. Alright Servant Carell, thanks very much indeed.